Brian, there in Washington for us. Well, staying in Washington, let's talk now to the Deputy Director of the National Security Network, Joel Rubin. Joel Rubin, what's the dynamic here? Why can't the US, the UK or France say not only do we want Colonel Gaddafi gone, we also want regime change? Well, the regime in place right now is under attack, both internally and externally, and it would be imprudent for the West to say regime change, largely because it would undermine the support in the Arab world that is now coalescing around a no-fly zone. And the point that the president has been making, which I think many analysts agree with, is that this is not about the United States. This is about Libya. This is about internal politics in Libya, the internal rebellion is driven by the people there. So making it about the West and different objectives would not be the right course. But if one was to take the last half of your last sentence and, subject, and, and uh, substitute Egypt or Tunisia for the word Libya, you could say, use exactly the same logic. Well, certainly the logic that this is not about the West, this is not about the United States is key. Uh, in Egypt, for example, the forces of democracy that protested in the street sought support from the outside, but they did not asked the outside to intervene. They did not want the outside to be the decision maker for their future. And now we see the result, which is a good referendum yesterday, free and fair, certainly, but it is moving forward. And the same will have to take place in Libya. If there is going to be a new Libya after Gaddafi, the Libyans themselves have to be empowered to create that. And what does the coalition want from those forces of democracy inside Libya? Well, right now what it wants is for the killing that Gaddafi's forces have been executing over the past several weeks to stop. Uh, this UN Security Council resolution, this is the second one, this decided that the killing went too far. Gaddafi did not stop, no ceasefire. So right now the forces need to demonstrate that they too are able to respond in a way that moves the problem, stopping the violence. That's the key essential point. We're into night two of Operation Odyssey as we speak. It's still very much ongoing. How does the coalition make sure that the Arab League stays on side? Well, it is definitely a, a diplomatic dance. Uh, Qatar, as one example, as described today by the Pentagon, is going to carry a flag in this coalition. The Pentagon announced that they are bringing over Qataris, pilots, and, uh, and, and infrastructure to be part of the coalition. That's key. Uh, but they will have to be sensitive to the Arab street and the ear of the Arab League. And this means, again, not making it about the United States, ensuring that it is about the humanitarian goals that were laid out by the UN and sticking to that international multilateral process. But there have been times, particularly since the first uh, Gulf War in 1991, when the United States has been astonishingly insensitive to the Arab streets. We're talking here now about the Arab League, about Qatar giving forces to go in, in effect, to go into Libya. If we turn that around, we've got Saudi forces already on the ground in Bahrain. So there's a diametric opposition going on there. How does the State Department square that when they talk to the Arab League? Well, it is very difficult to square these uh, different items. And certainly the argument that the administration is making is it's a country by country basis. But I would also say that the administration under President Obama has been very reluctant to engage militarily and even to engage aggressively diplomatically uh, in Egypt in putting out that the United States wants a specific outcome. It is waiting to see how the region reacts and in the case of the no-fly zone it has been responding to the demand from the Arab League itself but it is very important that it remain sensitive to the concerns that it not go down the road of taking this on as an American cause that this remain a cause from the region and from the people of Libya boots on the ground are certainly something that would change that dynamic. There must therefore be conversations going on between the coalition forces and the rebels. What are those conversations? Well, I'm not certain of the specifics between coalition forces and actionable intelligence and uh, any type of on the ground coordination. Clearly the Pentagon is saying that's not happening. But Secretary Clinton did meet with leaders of the opposition when she was in North Africa last week. And this is something that the State Department is going, I'm sure, and, uh, and know that they are going to be engaging in more aggressively. A diplomatic solution is ultimately what this is going to require. Uh, there's going to need to be a way out. Uh, Qaddafi is in a box and uh, when the no-fly zone goes into full effect and can they engage effectively and move him out.
try to convince me, and I'm not being arrogant when I say this, that your logic is sound, in as much as every other analyst we've spoken to in the past six hours here on BBC News has been saying there's got to be a situation where there's boots on the ground. Or, to ask you the question another way, when Secretary Clinton in Paris talks about unique assets, when the Vice Admiral giving the Pentagon briefings talks about unique opportunities, does there not come a point in this process where the United States has to get more involved than it wants to be today? Well, the, the hypothetical would say yes, that there always is a slippery slope potential. But clearly what the administration is trying to do is to ramp up the pressure more and more on fusion, create uncertainty within Qaddafi's own regime, his own leadership, leadership cohort, getting them to think, perhaps this isn't the best way for me to survive, and to get them to change direction from within. And uh, uh, in parallel to that, support the, re the rebellion movement through giving them air protection so that they can return to the momentum that they had. Gaddafi led his uh, more vicious onslaught. And that's the, the goal. If that doesn't work, certainly there will be a further debate here in Washington about whether more engagement is required. I'm at a loss to understand the difference between supporting the rebel movement and fighting with the rebel movement. Well, in this case, the no-fly zone does create support because it neutralizes the most effective weapons that Qaddafi has been using against it. And so with that, it in, in essence creates a more level playing field, which prior to two weeks ago, we saw the rebel movement doing quite well. Okay, we have to leave it there. Joel Rubin in Washington, thank you very much.